Did you just start to use ClickSense server environment? And you have some questions about how it works? That's not a problem. Let's check it out. If you have a ClickSense server installed in your or Click environment, it doesn't really matter. Once you log in, first thing you'll see will be a main screen. We can call it like this. You have a menu on the left side, start, which will always get you to this main page. And the same menu as here, just scrolling it down. Because if you go to any other menu, the menu on the left side will disappear and you will have to use this one. So yeah, let's go to start now. Here are the main shortcuts you might want to use. And if you just open this ClickSense server environment, you might want to enter your license key. So you should be able to do it through license management and site license option. Of course, your server has to have access to the internet if you're using your own server for the server to be able to check the license if it's a valid or not. But that's one time procedure. And once you enter the license, you will be able to see how many and what type of licenses you have. You can see that in license use it summary. So you can see the details of your license. And if you have an analyzer capacity license, you can see how many minutes are being used from your 1000 2000 if you have two licenses or even more minutes. I already talked about the licenses and uh, which one you should choose. So check out, I guess it should be somewhere here around on this side of the screen. So check this video to know more about which license you should use and uh, which is good for you. So let's get back to the main screen. Like I mentioned before, now you can't see that menu on the left side. So you can press this little triangle and you will see all the menus. So sometimes it's even faster just to press here and go to the menu you want to see. So first thing you want to do, if you've been using ClickSense desktop application, you might want to upload your apps to the server. Let's go to manage content apps and we can see the screen with our apps. In my case, I already uploaded the apps and if you want to import new app, just press import button at the bottom of the screen and then you will get an import app window on your screen. So you can choose the file from your computer, just press choose file, app name if you want it to have a different name. If you updated your app which was previously uploaded, you can check this one, replace existing app. What's good about that, that if you have a scheduler for reloading data for your app, it will be applied automatically and you will need to change anything about that. Okay, let's get back to the start screen and let's go to the next menu. So next one is content libraries. Here are all files that are attached with apps. Usually it's that small picture like thumbnail on the app. So when you will upload the apps to your server, they will appear here. If you create new apps, you can upload the pictures here and then you'll, you will be able to change the thumbnails of your apps very easily. You or your colleague who is working with app creation. Data connections is also a very important thing which you should configure because you won't be able to load the data. Once you upload the apps, all the connections will appear here and you will see the names on the name field. Well, the owner is the person who uploaded the app. So if your connection was working fine on your computer, on your Click desktop version, it should work fine here as well. Unless you're using ClickSense environment, not your own, then you will have to add IP addresses I will leave the link for that information in the description so that ClickSense servers would be able to access your own servers. I mean, your own servers should allow connections from those IP 
to take the data. So once you upload the apps, existing connections of those apps will appear here and most likely you won't be needed to create new ones. If you press on any connection, you will see the edit button available at the bottom of the page and you can edit the connection details or change something. So in this app objects page, you can see the sheets or pages of your uploaded apps. So if you select any one of them, you can press edit and you can add some tags or change the user access or see who has the access to one or another app. Streams is being used for the permissions. So we can call it like a department, for example, where you can, once you upload the app, you will have to assign it, when you publish it, of course, you will have to assign it to some kind of stream. Uh, and stream contains the users. So you can add as many users as you want to any stream, but one app can have one stream. And in here, I already have some streams created. You can press at the bottom on create new stream. You can type the name, you can type like test, custom properties, it's empty now. Let's press apply. Once we create the stream, we can add the names of the users we want to have access. Yeah, user, name, value. And then we can press like plus sign on, on here and we can add more users. Permissions for the stream, I leave only read permissions so that users could read the app content only without possibility to delete or publish. And then press apply. If we go to streams, we can see a test stream. The same way, if you want to delete any stream, just select it, press delete button at the bottom. It will ask you if you really want to delete it. Well, yes, you want to delete it in this case. Now tasks. In this menu, you can see all tasks that are created within your ClickSense environment. Usually it's reload tasks because uh, for the users, they cannot reload the applications by themselves. That's gone. And we cannot see the reload code as well. That's good. So for every application, you have to create a reload task and it will reload automatically. I would say it's more convenient because users will save some time. But if you have many applications, it might take a little bit more of your server resources because it will be loading constantly, let's say each hour, each two hours, each three hours or each day. And uh, users, if you have not so many users, let's say like our team has three, five users who are using ClickSense from time to time. Once we use the applications, we want to see the relevant data but we won't use it very often, like every one hour or so. So in that case, it uses a little bit more resources and uh, it's not used all the time, that data we get. So in here you can see the names of applications, what type of tasks it is, so it's reload. Is it enabled? Well, usually yes. On the next column you can see when it was executed last time and when it will be executed. So by these two columns you can see what's the period between executions like is it one day, is it one hour and so on. And of course if you'll select any of these applications you have some more additional actions. In here you can select like select all rows, deselect all rows, Let's press and it's deselected. At the bottom you can edit, you can start, you can stop. Yeah, if you want some application to be reloaded right away, you can select the task, press start and it will be reloaded. If you press on edit button, you will see the name of the application, you will see the details when it's scheduled, 
if we press on the triggers action shadow yes if we double click on the trigger we will see more details and how often it reloads so you can change them here next let's go to users if you have your domain connected you will see all your domain users in here with some more details so there is not much thing to do here you can see some more information by pressing information icon and what permissions we have what access do we have next let's go to system notifications well nothing is here but if there will be any important notifications you will see them here after that goes system notification policies so default is this one you can play a little bit more with them but i will not go deeper in this section and we have manage resources section and governance and configure system sections so in this video i will not go through all of these sections because it's more like click sense specific tasks i would say an environment configuration and in this case we'll leave it for the next time when we'll have something more specific like for example when adding a certificate you would need to go to proxies and then add the information there i also did a video about that you can see it here 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 it should be here on the right side we will leave these menus away for now to summarize everything i told you the most important things are apps you have to upload your apps to apps catalog data connections usually not much is needed to do here as everything will appear once you upload the apps if everything was configured and streams you can configure permissions which user will see what kind of data in the streams so i would say these are the main three things after you start using your click sense server environment and i guess that's all thank you very much for watching i hope you find this video useful if you like it please like the video if you want to see more content which is coming soon about click sense about actually power bi tableau and other data analytics friendly things please consider subscribing please consider please consider subscribing this channel I would really appreciate that. So, see you next time. Cheers. Mic is on. Very good. Very, 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 very good. Three, two, one, zero. Let's go. There is no button to create a new connection. All tasks. Again. Yep, I know about that. This happens with the um, not best quality Chinese products. Yeah, but you have no choice if you don't want if you don't want to buy a new one.